Okay guys, so today I want to go over <clears throat> this application that I made that emulates the Wii Remote uh, motion controls onto Dolphin and onto Windows specifically. Um, so this review is going to be, it's not really a review, it's a, more of a demonstration as kind of a proof of concept and a, sort of a showcasing of the early stages that I'm in with the development of the app. So. This review or this video is going to be a little technical at some point, so feel free to skip ahead at those parts. I'll try to give a warning about it, but it's also going to demonstrate how this works um, and sort of the ease of use of it. So the first thing I want to start off with is that it uses two components. It uses this Android application, which if you look at the icon, it says WeDroid uh, V2 with focus, and it's an icon of a Wii remote. So these are working titles and working uh, application icons, obviously. So it uses this application and it uses a Python file or a series of files, but a Python script on the target machine. So in this case, it's a Windows laptop, um, but it really only works on Windows at the moment. And I'll go over that a little later why. So the main code that you're running is gonna be this file and it contains, essentially it sets up a, U, a UDB, or sorry, a UDP server, uh, socket server. So if you, if you know what that is, great. If you don't, I'll try to explain. It's essentially just a way that you can take your machine with its IP address and bind a socket, which is just like, if you think about it like a server, to a specific port on your computer. In this case, it's hard program to go to the, whatever the IP address of the machine is, but it binds to the port 1234. And in the app, you'll see that it asks for an IP address. So you enter the IP address of this machine. You can, on Windows, you can go to the command line and type in IP config, which here I'll show. Um, so you do IP config, and it brings up your IP address. Uh, so you would enter that into the application, but if you notice, there's no way to edit the port yet. So the port number is hard coded into the app. Obviously that's not ideal. If you're using a computer and that port is taken up or it's not available for whatever reason, you don't want to be limited to that one port. So in, you know, in development of this app, I'm going to make it, first of all, that this isn't just lying here on top, but that there's going to be a separate sort of section that you can edit the, the uh, IP address and the port number. Second thing I want to do definitely is clean it up. This doesn't, like, this is kind of ugly. I don't like it. I want to make it look more like a Wii remote, maybe some kind of like icons or something uh, like stolen or taken from a Wii remote for this. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's really only two files it's running. It's running this main server one, which also, uh, I'll explain in a minute what it's doing, but it essentially takes care of all the, the mappings of the motion controls to key presses and mouse movement. And then there's a secondary file, which contains the actual C code that I wrapped in Python that lets you control mouse movement and button clicks in a program. So. Uh, to get a little technical, if you're familiar with the PY Auto GUI or some similar Python library, um, you've probably seen that you can do this you can really easily with the library. So the PY Auto GUI library essentially uh, lets you control the mouse and keyboard controls in Python uh, on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, whatever. However, it doesn't work, at least on Windows, it will not work inside of a program. It will only work sort of on the desktop or on the... Uh, like in a web browser or something, it doesn't work in game. So I had to go ahead and, and kind of scavenge the internet using uh, what's called scan codes to emulate key presses and uh, mouse movement and stuff and mouse clicks. And this is done because C is a low level uh, language. So it interacts nicely with Windows on like the operating system level. Okay, so outside of all that technicality stuff, they're pretty much saying that my code will run inside of a game. In fact, not only will it run inside of Dolphin, but it'll run inside of any first person shooter or any game, um, any PC game, which I actually don't think I have anything installed at the moment, but maybe at the end of the video, I will chop that in. Okay, so uh, I might as well just show you what the app is doing. So again, enter an IP address uh, in Android Studio, that's called a hint because it's, again, it's text, but you can't edit it, and then you start typing, it goes away. So if I were to enter in, let's say I entered in an IP address, I connect, you see now that it grayed out. Uh, that's the current IP address that you're connected to. So yeah, that happens. It'll, the app times out if you're not actually connected to anything, if it registers that it wasn't a valid IP address. 
Okay, so I'm gonna enter in my IP address. I don't wanna show it, so I'll just start typing something over it. Okay, so I've entered in my IP address, and now if I start this server, Let's actually maximize this. You see server started, and hopefully, I don't know how well it's gonna come up. Um, if you can see that the mouse is moving, but let's see, if I do the B button, let me close out of this to demonstrate that it does in fact right click and left click. So if I do the A button, you'll see we've clicked into this dolphin window. If I do the B button, you see that the right click menu pops up. So right click, oh, I guess it only works up here. Yeah, okay. Um, so we have, sorry, it's a little difficult to kind of do through the camera. Um, so B button, right click, and you can see that this is moving and I'll show my other hand is free. <laughs> um, the recenter button, this will be a little easier once I open up a game in Dolphin. So the A and B button, A is a left click, B is a right click. Uh, those are the only ones that are mapped to key presses. Again, the gyroscope is mapped to the mouse movement. And so what's happening in the app is that it says if there's a sensor change, i.e. there's a change in the gyroscope, send every state information that we have mapped. So send the state information of all these buttons, whether they're pressed or not, and what the gyroscope data is. And then the Python file on the computer handles all that information. It says, okay, the mouse or the gyroscope data is, let's say, negative five in the x direction. So we're going to move the mouse, whatever pixels in that direction. Um, and then the buttons, like if we open up a text editor, the buttons are just mapped to key presses, which is fine. I mean, uh, you don't really need, like, it, they're buttons. So all like keyboard buttons or Wii buttons are all buttons. So it doesn't really matter. So if we go here, and um, let's see, I think one, yeah, so you can see it's typing. Uh, let's see, one is W, two is mapped to S, plus is A, minus is D. And then the arrow keys are the number pads, I believe. So this, again, all the stuff that's typing out the mouse movement, that's all handled by the Python script, which is way easier to edit than the actual app because you don't have to actually like reload the app, reinstall the APK and everything. Um, so yeah, so that's nice. So if you have different key preferences for whatever reason, you can modify them by opening, again, the actual Python file on the desktop and just change. Instead of pressing the W key, press the whatever key. So that's nice. Um, again, doing anything in the app is a little more annoying and I would have to do that. Um, I have to do that pretty much every time I need to make a change to the app, which is frustrating. So again, let's open up uh, Mario Galaxy, just to kind of demonstrate. And one of the nice things is I actually have a shake feature as well. So I'm going to show that first. So I think I have a state. Yeah. And so I'm going to use this remote just to do uh, Mario's movement. So let's open up that full screen. Okay. So the game is in full screen. It's running at 1080p. Um, okay, Luma. So you're going to see, I'm going to press the button and it's going to recenter. So you see that. Um, now you can see that this is moving. Any kind of delay is due to Dolphin or just my laptop not being really that powerful um, in terms of actually like running the emulator. But you can see, so I'm only going to use my left hand, so I'll try to get in frame for this just to move Mario. And I think I have the Z button mapped to the trigger. But you can see, oh, I don't want to talk to you again. The A button jumps, and if we shake, Mario shakes, Mario spins. Um, and if you really, for some reason, don't believe that this is really working, you can see when I'm shaking, the cursor is moving. That's because the gyroscope is moving. So the shake is also mapped to the gyroscope. What I'm saying is, if the gyroscope sensor, so it goes from negative 10 to positive, or it goes from zero to 10, sorry. So I'm saying if the value of the gyroscope is almost fully the full value, so the full amount of acceleration that I can read, i.e. like a really strong shake, we're going to simulate a Wii Remote shake in Dolphin by, like the strong shake is actually just pressing the C button, and in Dolphin I set the C button to be a shake. 
Uh, so again, we can recenter, which is really nice. So the reason why you have to recenter, if you've played uh, any of the games that use the Motion Plus on the Nintendo Wii, like Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, or if you've played any game on the Nintendo Switch that uses the motion control, the way that they emulate this motion, or they do this motion control, is uh, using the gyroscope, which is exactly what we're doing here in this app. However, when you do this method, you end up getting what's called gyroscopic drift. So what that's saying is the more you move around, eventually the, like, the less accurate the pointer becomes because you're not actually pointing at anything. It's all relative movement, right? So you see even me just shaking around, I'm pointing at the center, but now it's up in the top. So now I have to recenter. So it's just a little thing. I mean, there's no way around it. If you uh, if you watch a video of World of Goo, I saw this video on YouTube of somebody playing it on the Switch, and they have to do the same thing, where after a while you have to recenter, and in that game they just have the plus button on the uh, Joy-Con to map to the like recenter button. So yeah, we can shoot star bits. So you know we can try to hit all of these. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what we have. What I have so far. Um, I don't think you can pause here. I know I have the pause button mapped, and when I was playing this before, I just couldn't pause it for whatever reason. So, yeah, I don't know. But all the buttons work. Um, so you, you see we can do... Uh, we can press up, go into first person, back. And yeah, and this is great. So I haven't had any issue with this in terms of latency. I initially had it running on what's called a TCP server, and that introduced a lot of latency. Uh, so I ended up switching to this, what, again, what I said is a UDP server, which introduces pretty much no latency. And it's go, it's working over your router. So let's say you have a desktop plugged in with Ethernet. This will work because it's they're communicating via your router. So it's your phone to your router uh, to your laptop or computer or whatever the target machine is. So really the biggest thing right now is you might be thinking, well, how about something like Mario Kart Wii uh, if you want to do tilt controls and actually play like like a you know a driving game. So that's something I have to think about. Um, it turns out in Android Studio you cannot actually, or in an Android app, as far as I'm aware, you can't pull both the gyroscope data and the accelerometer data, which is what I would use for the tilting, because we don't want relative movement with the gyroscope uh, like we're using with the gyroscope. For driving, you want absolute movement. Or absolute position so the gyroscope it says okay no matter the phone orientation the gyroscope will be reading zero unless there's movement it's relative movement with an accelerometer it does absolute movement so it'll say okay you're tilting the phone let's say it goes from zero to ten if you tilt it halfway it'll give you a value of five and it will keep giving you a value of five so I want to use the accelerometer for that part but uh, as I was saying in Android you can't really get both sensors to work uh, to give data at the same time. It's either it sends the accelerometer data or it sends the gyroscope data. And those sensors are going to overlap depending on the orientation of the phone and it's going to be a headache to do that. So I have to think about that. So that's one of the biggest things I want to do is add that tilt data. Um, another thing I want to do is Again, just make the app look better, get rid of this menu at the top, make it its own separate menu, or this uh, IP address bar, make it its own menu. And ultimately, again, just make the app look cleaner. Those are pretty much the three biggest changes. I think this is a pretty good success. It took me a few weeks to make, um, you know, with everything going on, I should have a little more time, hopefully, to finish it or to at least work on it. And yeah, once I get everything done, I'll hopefully publish a final version. Uh, if this video, you know, is popular and people are interested, um, in the actual application, I will definitely, uh, post to find a way to post the code somewhere. So if people, you know, if you guys are interested in this and you want to try it out yourself, um, I can post the code somewhere and I'll leave a link in the description or make an update video and post it then. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know if you have any ideas. If you know how anything about Android uh, app programming and sensor data management, let me know about that because that's kind of where I'm stuck at now. Uh, but yeah, thank you.